You know what they say, all good things come to an end, which means if this is coming to an end, then it must have been a pretty good thing. But it's not good, which is why we need to be optimistic. But if it's not good, and that which comes to an end is good, that means it's not ending, baby, let's go! In all seriousness, I'm somewhere in between, aw oh, man, they're really gonna take the 30 round magazines, aren't they? And they're blanketing the world with evil to prepare for the arrival of a Lovecraftian antichrist from the planet of pure black. Really just depends on my mood at the time, sometimes the weather. We will go over five ways to stay optimistic about the future of our country, which is important because if we don't have high morale, then we're not going to be successful because we're going to be demoralized. And they know that, so very important stuff. Do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. You've reached the white pill department. How can I direct your call? You've reached the it's going to be okay department. Do you know the extension of the party you're trying to reach? Before we get into that, something crazy has been going on for the last 15 days. Asterix, literally the last year. I'm sure you've noticed this, but of course it's still important to point out that many state and local governments have used the COPE virus to trample on the constitutional rights of millions while simultaneously defunding law enforcement while the mob and dangerous criminals roam free. When the government can't or won't ensure your safety, self-defense is your only option. That's why iTarget was invented, to give law-abiding citizens a cost-effective way to train in the safety and privacy of their own home. No more inconvenient trips to the range, no more expensive practice ammunition. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start training. iTarget Pro comes in all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR, so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. Today, you can save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code DOYLE at checkout when you go to iTargetPro.com. This is the smartest way for you to practice, and it pays for itself in like literally a day. That's the letter I, targetpro.com, iTargetPro.com, offer code DOYLE, very epic. I have things to say that I have already said, and so I am going to shamelessly recycle the footage here. Here's a timestamp if you want to skip through it, you've already heard it, whatever. Ready, set, go. About two weeks ago, I put out a two hour long dissertation on the harms of pornography that is literally irrefutable, hundreds of sources. And I did this all completely free of charge, maybe because I really do just care. Maybe it's like Elijah Schaefer said, maybe I'm mildly autistic, I don't know. But the point being that the video was posted. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you for participating involuntarily in the meta commentary on the importance of delayed gratification. It was all a metaphor, but I do just wanna take a second to talk about that video because the responses have been overwhelmingly positive uh, and inspirational, the comments, emails, messages, everything. And you might remember that the video was literally being censored by Google after it was posted. Like you could search for it on YouTube or on Google word for word and it wouldn't show up. But then you search for it on like DuckDuckGo or something and it would come right up. And it couldn't just be because the title of the video contained the word porn because other videos with that word and their titles would come up, including the one that we did last year, which was much less thorough. And that really just puts into perspective what we're up against because that video wasn't some big treatise against leftist economics or anything even explicitly political. That part was additive. That was the only part that is relatively up for debate. That video proved that pornography is extremely addictive, that it has addicted the vast majority of the men in this country, and that it is harming them psychologically, spiritually, sexually, etc. It proved that. And then from there, I extrapolated that if we continue to exist in that condition, then we will ultimately lose our country. That part I still believe, but I acknowledge that's just my inference. But the rest is irrefutable. And so what that means at the very least is that they wanted to stop you from realizing that our country's men are harming themselves and perhaps that you're harming yourself, uh, which if if you remember, is something that I said in the video, that they literally want to hurt you. And if you subscribe to what I believe is a completely reasonable inference, which I outlined in that video as well, it also means that we're correct in saying that the people pulling the strings are using pornography as a weapon against you because they know that it demoralizes you and will eventually enable them to totally conquer you. So just keep that in mind because ultimately this channel was not started to recite decades old arguments against centrally planned economies. It was not started to introduce contemporary arguments in favor of federalism. It was very simply started to help people and that's not a virtue signal. Like speaking very honestly, it's actually a political strategy because, you know, obviously we care about helping people, but I'll share with you something that I realized a very long time ago, which is that this battle that we're in, if it were an intellectual battle, then we'd never lose, but we are. We're losing badly and we have been for a very long time. And that's because it's a spiritual battle and we're not well. That's why we're losing. And so we want to help people because ultimately that is the pathway to success for us. And that's why this channel is so heavily targeted because they know that if we can heal enough people spiritually, then we will just march down the field. And we just made some pretty decent progress with that. We just helped thousands of people break or begin to break their pornography addictions. Imagine what that butterfly effect is going to look like. 
I'm thinking about getting billboards too, spread awareness. I don't know, more on that later. But the point is that we all knew that this video was going to help a lot of people and it has, and that's great. And just today is a Jacob Wool moment, but I was in a coffee shop. I was planning out these videos. I'm there for 10 minutes and this kid comes up to me. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this because I posted on my story about it. You should definitely follow me by the way, because I post pretty good content throughout the day. But he comes up to me and he's like, bro, your video changed my life. I'm done with porn, bro. I'm done. Total Chad, totally high energy. But of course, this is just one side of the coin. Because remember, we knew that it was going to help the boys take control of themselves but we also knew that we were going to get lots of backlash from the weak, pathetic, degenerate men of society. And we were correct because of course, we're always correct. And it's important to note that I could have made a two hour video about why vanilla ice cream is inherently right wing, which it is. And nobody panics because it's all part of the plan. But you make one two hour anti-pornography dissertation, well then everybody panics because it's not part of the plan because it highlights their degeneracy and their deviancy and their insecurities. And so they have to attack it, painfully predictable. And so I would just like to take a second to illustrate the difference between the types of people that we're dealing with here. Take a look at the coffee chat. I'll point out what we're all seeing. I'll point out the obvious. You've got an extremely positive canthal tilt. Those are the hunter eyes. You've got a steep angle on the brow ridge as indicated by the sheer volume of his eyebrows. Obviously the locks of flowing hair, wider set nasal bridge, and the cope shield makes it difficult, but you can still see there's a very strong jawline present. He was about 6'1", solid shoulder to waist ratio. And so you take this guy, you take the coffee chat. Now compare him to any one of the guys who got triggered by my anti-porn dissertation. I don't think I need to explain any further. I think the vindication speaks for itself here. You have the average porn fan versus the average hawk appreciator. That's all I'll say about that. There's a strong connection between your spiritual health and your outward appearance, and the aforementioned dichotomy exemplifies that quite well. It's like it's like we talked about in the video, the horseshoe theory of practical intelligence. You've got the low IQ, well, you're ugly, and you got the average IQ, well that's actually an ad hominem attack, and then you've got the high IQ, you look spiritually unwell, therefore I will not listen to you, though I will pray for you. Who needs dopamine when you have vindication, boys? The last thing I'll say though, um, a lot of people have been asking how they can help the channel or help what we do as far as that goes. I don't know. As far as like the channel goes, the best thing to do, uh, go to the website, heckoffcommy.com, get a membership over there. That's how we keep the lights on. That's how we're able to do this, do cooler stuff, make better content, put up billboards, who even knows. And I try to only talk about it like once a month or so because I don't like plugging it. But you know, if you want to help, that's the best way. And then you get access to a bunch of cool features through the website. And we're actually, we're going to be putting a lot more content on the website once we get the new studio, the stew as a uh, proxy cameraman, although calls it up and running. Uh, a lot more content in general is going to be coming out. We got big plans for this year. Very exciting. So if you want to help, go to the website, get a membership. It's only a couple bucks a month. And then you're literally helping bring people to our side, making them more disciplined, ultimately helping to build a pretty strong coalition. So we're excited. And remember, the more memberships we sell, the sooner I can have kids. And so if you're curious to see what happens when I start multiplying, that's the way to do it. I actually, you know, jokes aside, I think that'll introduce opportunities to teach about homeschooling, building relationships with other young conservative families, things like that. I don't know too much about that right now, but when I do and I'm working through those things, I think it'll be good to share with people. So anyways, very epic. Here's the thing. As much as the future may not seem bright, especially considering a lot of the things that we discuss on this channel, some of the trends, the fact of the matter is that to be blackpilled, to be nihilistic, to give up, whichever description you'd like, that is in itself a form of cope. It is a rare form of cope, but it is a form of cope nonetheless. So sometimes people will convince themselves that things really aren't so bad in order to cope with just how bad things really are. But also sometimes people will convince themselves that things are so bad that there's nothing that they can do, which is just a rationalization for apathy, for inaction, laziness, etc. So this isn't to lay out exactly how we can push back against this. We talk about that enough in other videos. This is specifically how to remain optimistic in general, because a lot of people have said that they've been struggling with that recently, understandably. So I figured that I could put this together pretty quickly so uh, that we have something to, to get out while the new studio is being put together. So we have five ways to stay optimistic, starting with number one, which is something that we talk about all the time on the channel, which is be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. How are you going to worry about a world that you can't control if you can't even control yourself? Dudes be at home with Pornhub open, beer cans everywhere, junk food everywhere, marijuana assembled. I don't know how that stuff works. They're like 30 pounds overweight. They, they spend 12 hours a day online and they're like, the world is out of control, bro. You are out of control. That's the principle of it. But there's also the fact that if you're not disciplined, you by definition aren't going to have an optimal future. Therefore, you have no reason to be optimistic. You have to be able to delay the gratification, to be thinking long term. That's how you achieve success. And you can't do that without discipline. So you literally need to be disciplined in order to be optimistic. And then as far as being generally in a good or bad place and how that affects your mood, you're aware 
aware of when your lack of discipline is costing you, whether that's in terms of opportunities, money, whatever. Like you know instinctively when you're not reaching your own potential and it probably makes you pretty depressed. And you might even double down on whatever your bad habit is to cope with that, but I would implore you not to because it's just gonna make it worse. And then if we can all collectively be disciplined and focused and sharp, then I think we could start to seriously get things going on the right track. So that's that, we knew that. The next one is more uh, political, which is that you must understand and acknowledge the macro timeline. And what that means very simply is that we can't allow ourselves to become too focused on what is immediately happening. We must also look towards the future and arguably more importantly, the past. Think about it this way. The ideas that legitimately challenged the political establishment, they gained a lot of traction in the early 1990s. Think of figures like Ross Perot, Pat Buchanan, and while they were ultimately unsuccessful, look forward to where we are now with somebody like Donald Trump who secured the presidency for a term. Same ideas as Buchanan, literally took America first from him, arguably took Make America Great Again from him, or at least from Reagan. It doesn't matter. The ideas were essentially the same, except this time they were more successful. And so the question becomes, can the next figure, whoever that may be, permanently or at least irreparably shatter the political consensus. Things are getting worse. Yes. The propaganda is getting worse. Yes. But I think those are at least related in part. The propaganda, the demoralization, like if it weren't, if we weren't waking up a little bit, then they probably wouldn't have to try so hard. And so you see this all over the world as well. People are waking up. And of course, the majority of people are still basically sheep. But the people who aren't sheep, who were just maybe distracted or whatever, I think those people are going to wake up and it's going to be very positive for us. Maybe not enough to fix things, but at least enough to start seriously pushing back. So we can't be thinking in terms of elections or presidencies or sessions of Congress. We have to think in terms of the macro timeline. And there is at least one trend on the timeline that suggests that we might make it out of this one. And that doesn't mean that we just ease off the gas. That just means that at least we might be headed not into a brick wall, maybe just into an overpass or into a thicket or something like that, right? Uh, next one, semi-political, literally just go outside, go have fun. I was in an arcade a few weeks ago. I posted a picture of myself with a Donkey Kong cabinet on my Instagram story. And I was like, who thinks I can set the high score? About 20 minutes later, I did it. Cause I'm the best at Donkey Kong. Few will take this into account. Someone replies to it. They're like, John, the country's on fire. President Trump had the election stolen from him. And you're just playing at the arcade. Do you even believe what you say? And it's like, bro, I live in this cycle. It's not healthy. Elijah Schaefer thinks I have autism. Obviously I'm too charismatic, but I get where he's coming from. The point is that in order to beat you, they have to demoralize you. And in order to demoralize you, they need you constantly plugged in, constantly consuming the propaganda, the fake news, glued to the screens, isolated, locked down. And at a certain point, literally just going outside is a political strategy because it will make you happier and it will make you more effective in the long run. That's right, gamers. Donkey Kong is a political strategy. And this doesn't mean just go crazy, Pleasure Island mode, blow off everything just to go have fun. But it does mean that there is something to be said about taking a few hours every week and just going and doing something that you really enjoy. Not just mindlessly navigating through the internet in the name of relaxation, but like really going out there with the boys and doing something epic. It might sound redundant, but we are the future. And if we're not doing well, if the boys are down bad, then we can't expect the future to be bright or for us to be successful. The next one, uh, which is pretty obvious, just take some time every day and count your blessings. Every night when I pray, I take a moment to reflect on everything that I was blessed with that day. Anything from getting a phone call from someone I love to laughing really hard, accomplishing something, whatever it may be, when you actually take a few minutes to re like replay your entire day and focus on everything good that happened, it really does put into perspective, bloomer mode, just how good things really are. And it gets back into the negative effects of constant information being constantly plugged in. It distracts you from the reality of the human experience and how life was supposed to be lived. And that just demoralizes you. So it's important to remind yourself how good it actually is and how you're blessed in different ways throughout your life, even if you don't realize it immediately. Um, and speaking of blessings, last one, you gotta find God. And I don't preach too much on this channel because I know people don't like being told what to believe, except when it's about politics, that's fine. But when it's about the literal truth of our existence, hey man, what's your angle? I don't want you trying to preach to me. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But I will say that without God in your life, you are basically telling yourself, even if only implicitly, that you have no purpose, which is not true. But nonetheless, that sort of self-assessment is not conducive to happiness, let alone optimism. The truth is that we all have a purpose and that there's a plan for all of us. And in the end, we win. Like, we know how this story ends. We got goal line defense up at the pearly gates, baby. We know that no matter how bad it gets here, and it will get much worse eventually, we're going to win in the end and good will prevail. But in the meantime, find God, go to church, pray, and then watch your life get better. Do it for 60 days. I dare you. Watch your life get better. God just wants a relationship with you. He wants to bless you, but he'll only do it if you're ready for it and if you ask for it. Could talk a lot more about this. I think I will at a later time. Maybe I'll do a video on the website about this. But for now, simply find God. Give it 60 days. I guarantee you that your life will improve. You'll see.
It's almost as though when you follow the rules of our creator, things just work out better. Curious, huh? Keep your head up, king. Stay disciplined. Look at the big picture. Literally go outside, count your blessings, and find God. And if you have time, go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. They're a friend of ours. They make this all possible. That's the plan. Stay optimistic. Stay high energy. I have contacts. I have reason to believe that it does, in fact, get better. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and of course, share the video with a friend. Simple video, check. Quick video, check. Existing in a state of purgatory as the new studio is developed and eventually the content kitchen is opened, check. Maybe not the most thorough video, maybe not the vote the most detailed video, but nonetheless, still important from time to time. We love to see it. So yeah, I'm getting antsy. I'm getting really antsy. I want the content kitchen to open. I want it to open. I want it. I want the content kitchen. I want it. Want to get to work, but alas, these things take time. So true. So true. That's, that's a really good point, John. Wow. I've, I've never thought of it that way. So insightful. I hate myself. Just kidding. Just kidding. Skits moment. End of video. Two minute outro skits moment. This is the content that the people want. Thus, I will deliver for it is my job. I work for you. Remember that. Thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.